Welcome to the second video about my autonomous robotic tic-tac-toe player. Since I'm continuing to document the development goals of the project, I thought I would at least list them here briefly and maybe talk more about them in a future video. In the first video, you saw the robot's vision system and how it was able to sense the pieces on the board, but there was no robot and I had to make the moves myself. Check it out if you haven't seen it. As you can see, this time there actually is a robot in the video. He's the UR Metal from UFactory, a four-axis open-source robotic arm based on the Arduino microcontroller platform. Since he's a four-axis robot, he can move in all three directions, and he can also rotate his hand. In this video, you'll see the robot making its own moves, but since the vision system you saw before isn't integrated yet, I'll be providing his eyes. Here at the end of the robot is his hand, or end effector, which is fitted with a suction cup and using a small pump, like you might find in an aquarium, the arm is able to pick up and release objects. There are other things that can be attached to the end of the arm, such as a claw-like gripper and a pen holder. Really? Really? Come on, you gotta be kidding me with that. But the suction cup will work great with these terrific markers that my friend Ken designed and 3D printed for me. Aren't they nice? Single print on his dual extruder flash forge creator. Ken's an awesome guy. Just as in the first video, the robot's program logic decides what moves it'll make to try to win the game. And although it's attached to the laptop computer, that's only so we can see what the robot's thinking and so we can enter the moves, because he can't see. So the robot needs to know which marker it's using and where it wants to place it. And though he can't see, he's aware of the positions of all the squares on the board and each of the stacks of markers. Internally, he maintains a picture of the current state of the board based on the moves he makes and the moves we tell him that we're making. Having the robot move its piece from the X or O pile to the destination square was relatively easy using the built-in programming of the arm, but early in development, the motion of the arm was much rougher than you see it now. Because the robot is open source, it meant I could modify the robot's internal programming to improve its accuracy and make the motion more smooth. Open source also means that I could contribute those changes back to the robot's creators. That's me, Hello Kitty Stormtrooper. When the changes were accepted, they became part of the firmware code that everyone uses to program the arm. When I talk about robots with middle school students, I try to convince them that engineering math isn't necessarily so hard. So I'll show an example of a problem I had with a robot that I solved just using basic math. Early in my programming of the arm movement, I realized that picking up a piece and moving it to a destination would rotate the marker, meaning that it wouldn't be square to the board when the robot set it down. I could have used circular markers, but then, of course, the letters would still be rotated. The arm was supposed to play like a human. All right, now, what do we think of that? And no human player would be happy if they couldn't make proper moves. Oh, oh, okay, all right, all right. Now, is that behaving? Earlier, I said that the robot's fourth axis of movement is the ability to rotate its hand. I could use this ability to turn the pieces and align them properly, but the question was how much I needed to twist the hand. And that depends on where the piece is picked up and where it's put down. The board is defined on a fixed grid in front of the robot, so I've programmed him with uh, X and Y coordinates for all the positions as well as the locations of the marker stacks. We can see from, well just by looking at it, that the rotation of the hand should correspond to how far the base has to rotate. But solving for that angle in a triangle with no known angles or equal sides isn't simple. I remember enough geometry to know that solving right triangle problems is relatively easy, so I just split the problem into two halves. A quick search on Google, okay, Google Images, confirmed it was pretty easy to determine the simple equation for the angle of rotation given the x and y coordinates of a location. By solving for each half of the move, I could simply add those two angles together to determine the full hand rotation needed to keep the marker from turning. With the solution in place, the arm can now place its markers in their proper alignment. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, right? Give it up. So at this point in the project, we can again play a full game. This time, the arm not only determines its moves based on the opponents, 
but can now physically respond by moving its own markers as well. Next, I'll be integrating the vision system you saw earlier with the movement you saw here as the next step in the path toward a fully autonomous tic-tac-toe playing robot. And after that, I'd like to continue to work on giving the robot an ability to express emotional states. Alright, well you're doing a lot better. It's kind of an easy game. I kind of started it 